Cheers, guys. Epix911, welcome to the Elitist Geek VR News for July 26th. Lots of things to talk about, guys. Uh, it's Tuesday. We're getting closer to Friday, the best day of the week. So let's get started. So SIGGRAPH 2016, I mentioned uh, in yesterday's video is, or the night before, is a video and you know, immersive technology conference. And it's taking place, NVIDIA's there, AMD is there. Speaking of both of them, they announced their VR workstation class cards. And what separates these cards from your typical gaming cards, and, and this is where people have to be careful. I actually know somebody who bought a Quattro, an NVIDIA Quattro, didn't realize it was a card for rendering, like, 3D Studio Max, this was over a decade ago, and ended up basically with a piece of cruft. Like, it did not power anything. <laughs> it made stuff arguably worse than onboard. Okay, not that bad, but it was pretty bad, right? Anyways, these cards fall into that same category. They are workstation enterprise class for VR editing, rendering, the tool sets, the worlds, right? Uh, AMD calls theirs the Pro WX7100 and NVIDIA the Quadro P6000. Now, both of these are over a thousand bucks. They are very expensive and they are very single minded in terms of their purpose, right? And I already mentioned that. So keep that in mind. It's still cool to get these kinds of tools out there, right? Because these will definitely help with building VR engines, building VR worlds, all kinds of cool potential, just not as a consumer card. The next item was dealing with the System Shock remake. And this one kind of bummed me out a little bit, guys. I just want to be honest. It System Shock, to me, and I've mentioned it before, it's near and dear to my heart. It was probably, and still is, top sci-fi RPG game for me, all time, bar none, probably not even close. And I've got a lot of favorite sci-fi RPGs, right? RPGs are my favorite genre. There was something about System Shock. Now, I did not play the original game. I played the CD-enhanced version about a year after. I knew that was coming and I just wanted to wait to get the full experience. I had purchased a CD-ROM drive. It was pretty new at that time, right? People were still using floppy disks, just to give you an idea. And I wanted that SVGA experience. There was no way in hell I was going to be able to afford the virtual reality HMD that was available at that time, that VFX1 unit. So I was like, damn it, I want to play it multimedia enhanced, which was just a fancy way of saying... We include audio tracks, right? Shodan's voice was creepy as hell. Just still probably... Okay, I say my favorite sci-fi RPG. Probably my favorite RPG voiced villain of all time. Bar none as well. Shodan was amazing. Just an amazing, amazing voice acting job. It was just phenomenal. Contrasted, and this is why for me the enhanced version is the version of the game do not even waste your time with any other version other than the enhanced which they have on like good old games right because while shodan was voiced by a professional voice artist the crew member digital tapes that you found th strewn throughout the station were done by looking glass employees and they are bad like they are cheesy levels of bad bad so bad you just, okay, you got to listen to them, okay? They are that bad. But they add to it. It's part of the charm because you've got the great contrasted with the Terra bad, right? So if you can find that, pick it up. But where I was going with that before I went off on that Shodan tangent is Night Dive Studios, a company uh, that wanted to resurrect the franchise and basically create a faithful re- make of the game not a reboot but a remake so the same game with modern resources had in their stretch goals included a virtual reality stretch goal 
Unfortunately, they've only got about 41 hours left and they need about 2 million bucks, which is more than they've already raised, which is 1.9 million. Basically, they got to double what they have now to make that work. And it doesn't look likely with less than two days left unless, you know, things just go apeshit and people start donating or some benevolent, really nice billionaire comes by or multimillionaire and says, boom, here you go. Here's $2 million for seeding funds. Probably not going to happen, which is a shame because if there's one way that I would want to play System Shock again, it would be VR. I cannot think of another sci-fi game more worthy and more desirable to make a virtual reality experience than System Shock, right? So yeah, if you haven't played that game, it holds up amazingly well. You can play it in 1024 by 768 on modern systems, which I know isn't great, but it does cut down on the pixelation quite a bit. They didn't have a 3D accelerated a 3D accelerated gameplay. It was basically software uh, engines, right? So, you know, it doesn't look the prettiest, but it doesn't look totally ugly, but the gameplay is amazing. So give that a shot if you come across it. It's a shame they can't get the VR in. I, I would have loved the game for that. I really would have. It, definitely. I'm still going to play this. I'm still supporting them. Yes, I know. Kickstarters like early access, but again, my criteria as I've laid out before is if they have a successful publishing or development history, they're not as likely to be prone to scope creep. They're going to be able to manage the project, execute and deliver. And that's why four out of the six or seven Kickstarters that I've supported have so far delivered. The other three are pending. Uh, those are really the only times that I do support, right? Is if they can build a good case, show industry experience. And if they don't show industry experience, that's okay if it's tight. They've got a plan. They've got the resources. They can somehow convince me in their three, four, five minute video, they can make this work, right? Without my bullshit detector going off, going like crazy. The next game was really disturbing i saw it over a morning coffee this morning okay this one's gonna be a doozy guys let's just have a schlock of beer here and and break this one down it's a baby fighting game yeah that's pretty much what i did a baby what kite and lightning which is a company uh consisting of basically two full-time devs is creating a virtual reality Baby fighting game. Now, what bothered me about this, and they've raised 2.5 million in seed money for this, I'm gonna have the link below, is they don't really show you a hell of a lot. I mean, they show you some stuff, but what they show you is creepy as hell. Like, it's not cute babies here. We're not talking chubby little babies in diapers. We're talking creepy adult babies, right? Like, if you've watched Trailer Park Boys, Picture bubbles in a diaper fighting. It's not a good sight. It's freaking scarring. It's horrible. That's where the game seems to be going. And I could be totally off. It could be a hoot. It could be a blast. I'll probably try it because my curiosity at this point, I got to admit, is peaked. But that doesn't take away from the fact that that is one freaking disturbing looking game. Check it out. Let me know your thoughts on that one, guys. Samsung Galaxy S8 is going to make a huge focus on virtual reality. They are going to be using UHD screen technology, and that's basically 3840 pixels, right, by 2160, essentially 4K, almost 4K, right? Uh, well, 4K, depending on the definition, exactly. The problem is it's a phone, and up till now, Samsung has generally used their phones as not just the screen for the VR experience, right? That then they would then uh, portion, but it also provided the GPU power. So it would basically be the screen running the VR game within the same unit. Now, with 4K, you don't have to do any math to know you know and I know, because we've been at this VR thing now for a couple of months, 
that you need a hell of a GPU to power that. So the rumor is, is they're going to be able to connect it to PCs. That makes sense. That would be pretty cool. So that's what I'm going to be following. Um, I want to get at least one mobile phone VR solution. And admittedly with Sony PlayStation or Sony VR coming up, I'll get the Sony VR and then I'll probably wait for that Samsung S8 or S8 Edge. And for my fourth VR purchase, kind of go in that direction. That's kind of where I'm hedging my bets. So we'll see which way uh, that one goes. But they also have their code name Samsung, right? For Project Dream. So how they're going to all tie this in, are they going to enter into an agreement and have PC functionality built into the unit, like chips, G CPUs, GPUs, or is this strictly, you know, something that you plop into an HMD and conventionally, just like with our, you know, riffs and stuff, plug in to a PC or run independently? We don't know. That's what we're going to have to wait and see, but definitely pretty interesting, definitely pretty cool. And the push to 4K, it's going to happen eventually, right? Let's assume VR takes off like we all want it to do, or hopefully most of us want it to do, um, because 4K will be amazing. But there's so many other things to work on. Honestly, if they, if they said, look, we're going to improve in three of the four areas that you've talked about with virtual reality, right? And yesterday's video or the day before, we talked about physical objects in VR, right? We've talked about sound in VR. We've talked about facial expressions. Deliver all of that while we're still on 1080p and I'm content as hell. I am okay with that. There's no problem. And my bet would be most of you would be okay with that too because you're enhancing the experience with graphics that already look okay, right? Now, with that said, obviously, the 4K is going to be that much more immersive, that much more realistic. I just hope we find a nice balance. And usually, this kind of stuff works itself out, right? Where we're getting a bit more synergy between the inventions and the advancements in VR so that we're able to address some of that with 1080. By the time we're ready for 4K, we've got a lot of that figured out already. That's my hope in terms of where we go with virtual reality. Now, the next one has to do with a Canadian artist and he is known as Dead Mouse. And I love music. I have a wide range of tastes. Everything from metal, death metal, classic rock, classic metal, to electronic, uh, techno, house, EBM, you name it. I love it all. Uh, I'm not a huge country fan. And no offense, if any of you like country music, power to you. It's just not my bag. Um, I have a physical reaction. Okay, I can't say that, but I really do. I was going to try to convince you I had a medical condition against country music. I don't, but I almost do. If it's playing in a store, I usually end up having to leave the store. Like That's how much it kind of just grates on me. But with that said, if you love country, power to you guys, right? Or gals. Love your country, no problem. I just don't share that. Anyways, Dead Mouse is doing a VR collaboration. And the VR collaboration is going to be a game where you play Dead Mouse, the artist, Joel Zimmerman, and basically either try to get him home, from home to a gig, or from a gig to home. I can't remember off the top of my head which one that is, but it's it's one of the two. Anyways, as a reward for doing that, you basically get a 360 degree concert of a track called Sacred, I believe. Yeah, a Saved. Saved is the track. Now, his music tends to be kind of prof uh, progressive house style music, and it's really good for listening to to while you're creating something. That's what I find. And there's one song that escapes me right now. It's on the tip of my tongue. But it's the perfect. It was released in May. What the hell is it called? Anyways, it's the perfect development style song, right? Really, really good for just being creative. If you're drawing, programming, whatever. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is to do with 
VR and the music industry. Now, the music industry has traditionally fallen off the train track, right? They've missed the ride on so many things. And I apologize if there's like a little bit of an audio change. Somebody turned on the AC in the room next door in the gym. So hopefully that's not going to make a huge audio issue. But anyways, that's on. But the music industry has just missed stuff, right? Think about it when it came to CDs. Yes, they had CDs. They issued CDs. But when the first multimedia CDs started showing up, right? Where you could have video footage on a CD, etc. They missed the boat on that. MP3 format, they missed the boat on that. MP3 could have been the music industry. It could have been MI3, music industry three format. That's how bad they blew it, right? But then the biggest, the most massive blunder that they made was still to come. And that was digital distribution. That should have been such an obvious to the music industry. But oh my God, that passed them by. Like 747 roaring in front of their face and they missed it, right? We all remember Lars and his Napster issues and the apology and the fallout with Metallica and all that stuff, right? We got to keep in mind that was 10 years before iTunes. 10 years. The music industry had a lot of time to conceptualize and build the framework for what could be their version of iTunes, but they missed the boat. So, when it comes to the music industry, am I optimistic with regards to VR? Hell no. Hell no. Hopefully, with artists like Dead Mouse, it can get better, right? At least. Case in point, imagine you're watching a concert of one of your favorite artists, right? It's VR content. Maybe it's Slayer. I'm at a Slayer show. I'm in the first row. I'm in the middle of a mosh pit, right? That kind of experience, using all those things we talked about in the past week or two, the, the physics, right? The enhanced audio, the enhanced hand abilities, um, facial expressions, all of that stuff. What that would do for just a concert experience like that. Being in a mosh pit at the front of the concert, or maybe you want to sit up way high in the nosebleeds because you like the panoramic view and you like seeing your artists look like ants. Hey, power to you, right? Not my bag, maybe yours. So VR has crazy music industry potential, but I can almost guarantee you they will miss this train and it's just going to keep going right by them. And then in 10 years, they're going to be pissed off and start suing people and we'll get the whole rigmarole all over again. I hope I'm wrong. Now, the last thing I want to talk about has to do with a Liverpool company called Visuality Studios. They are coming up with custom virtual reality. So they have a studio space. It's room space style VR, their own proprietary HMD, looks like a pair of ski goggles. You provide them with a fantasy slash concept. So it's fantasy island meets make a wish. I don't know. Um, in an earlier recording, I had the first one completely escaped me. But anyways, Imagine just being able to come up with something like you're a history geek. You want to go to ancient Egypt, right? Or ancient Rome. They will provide that experience. You can then explore it with their HMD in that room scaled environment, right? Do I ultimately think that would be successful? Hell no. I think it's a poor business model and that's just my opinion. I do don't think they can make that work unless 98% of that stuff is coded and ready to go. Having to create that stuff custom is just going to be way too time consuming for two individuals. And that's the way the article made it sound like it was just two full-time coders running the company and founding it, right? If they have a huge team, okay, things might be different. But from a, you know, revenue 
mainstream point of view. I just don't see this working. Unless, again, you had 98% of the content ready to go. Somebody comes up with something as obscure as, I want Mayan era jungle experience. Boom. And you're there, right? That's the kind of detail. If they can get that going, sure. But I don't think they will. So I know it's a little pessimistic, but there's a lot of cool areas that VR can go into. And I don't take anything away from these guys for trying. I just personally don't think it'll be successful, right? So your guys' views may vary on that. Love to hear what you think. That's it for the news, guys. Till the next time, cheers.